what I love about all the work that I've been doing is that the control is in my hands. I can do things to feel better. I'm not just wishing and hoping and praying that depression, you know, goes away. Hola, hola, everybody. Welcome back or welcome to my channel where I talk about uh, mental health, mindfulness, coping skills, and more recently, motivation for people with depression and anxiety. If you're not part of my amazing 62 subscribers, I love you so much, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Uh, but if you are not part of this wonderful community, consider joining us by clicking the subscribe button and also hitting the notification bell. That way you get a notification every time I post a video. So I wanted to um, tell you guys, I didn't post uh, last week and the reason since in this channel we're open about mental illness the reason being that I was struggling with my depression I did feel uh, sad that I couldn't post I don't know if it was that I couldn't or I just actually decided not to do it first of all um, I'm doing better I'm feeling better since I've been uh, dealing with my depression because it's not just uh, struggling I've been actively doing things to deal with my depression I decided to make this video to share the things that I I was doing to feel better to not you know give way to all my intrusive thoughts my ruminations so what I've been doing is I've been thinking about depression as a super villain and I'm just trying to fight it. I'm happy to say I'm winning, but this super villain is so annoying. She comes back every single day. Yes, yeah, it's a she. So today is just about sharing a few things that I've been doing in the of the past two weeks. So if anyone is dealing with their own or fighting with their own supervillain, maybe this can help you. And if you think that you've gotten some value from this video, and if you know someone else that is, you know, fighting with their own supervillains, share the video with them and maybe it can help them. The first thing that I want to clarify is that I gave myself time to feel everything that I needed to feel. I don't believe in suppressing feelings. Well, believe is not the word. I think, I know from experience that it's uh, really bad for you. So, you know, we have lots of emotions for a reason. The problem with myself and lots of people is that those emotions can get very intense and very in my case personally because I have borderline personality disorder I think that is one of the main uh, traits of uh, this disorder and it's like um, my emotions sometimes control me instead of the other way around I would like to speak in the past my emotions used to control me but you know sometimes it it happens uh, but I think I'm doing so much better at controlling them thanks to dialectical behavior therapy and mindfulness, which is the core concept in this um, therapy, DBT. Sometimes circumstances like this pandemic that has uh, lasted how long now? So yeah, th these circumstances are very unique and special and we're all human. So, of course, it's natural to have these emotions that are, are not very pleasant. But, I gave myself a couple of days to just be. 
I tried not to be demanding with myself. I tried not to be judgmental. That one for me is really difficult because I, you know, I'm 40 years of judging myself. <laughs> but every time I have this judgment about myself, I try to do something that I learned in therapy, which is imagine the thought as something physical. For instance, I really like to imagine the, the thoughts like in a bubble with something written. This week, uh, well, the past two weeks, what happened was uh, my bubble would say, you were doing so well. What happened? This is a step back. And some of those. But before therapy, before all of the work that I've been doing and that I'm sharing with you, I would spiral into this, you know, rumination. And each thought was worse and harsher than the last. So now what I do is I imagine that bubble with that thought and I imagine that I do this with the bubble or I just do and I imagine the thoughts going away. Um, sometimes I, I'm a bit more violent. I imagine myself kicking the thought. But <laughs> I know I've been making a lot of videos about uh, motivation and talking about how we can, you know, use different uh, techniques. But I realized that these days that I uh, my depression was worse i realized that i just needed to give myself a break i thought to myself i'm going to just you know relax so i did things like watching a good series on netflix i slept well if i wanted to stay in bed a little bit later you know i just did it because it's like my body uh, needed rest but I didn't stop doing the things that I know I have to do and I have to force myself to do them when my depression is really bad. So things like, you know, it, even if I stayed in bed a bit longer, things like, okay, today you needed to rest, you slept a lot, now it's fine. Before what I used to do was like, oh, again. You know, people waking up early at 5 in the morning. I see these videos, like my morning routine. I start at 5 and it's 12 and I haven't done anything. And <laughs> now, mm -mm. okay, you needed to rest. You're rested. Yes, the super villain is there punching you. I said, you know what? I'm going to punch you back. I'm going to get up. First of all, to help me get up, if you ever have depression or know someone that um, had depression, you know that getting out of bed is one of the most difficult things. So what I did was I put some um, music, I put music uh, that was really, you know, upbeat, that kind of music that makes you happy, you know. For instance, one of them for me is Queen. I mean, for me, for everybody who doesn't like Queen. And then one, two, three, and I got up. Then a reward for getting up, put the kettle for my coffee. So while I'm waiting for the kettle, I make my bed. And that one instantly makes me feel better because it makes, you know, I live in a very small studio flat. If you've seen one of my videos where I um, tidy and clean, it is very small. So when I make the bed, it looks tidier. So I said, oh, that felt good. Well, let's do something else. And then I just tidy a bit. And then I know that after that one, I'm gonna do something that I like or that is good for me. So this week what I've been doing is I've been choosing between doing a mindfulness meditation with the Calm app. For me, the best is guided meditations. And what I love about this app is that they have specific subjects. So you have a series that is 
uh, the emotion series so you have like one meditation for um, grief one for anxiety and what I was doing this um, days that I was uh, struggling a bit more uh, was do the meditation that talks about depression it mentions things that I already know but it's good to have that voice like from someone else telling you this is not gonna last forever you know that it ends what I love about all the work that I've been doing is that the control is in my hands I can do things to feel better I'm not just wishing and hoping and praying that depression you know goes away first of all I know I want to feel better I mean who doesn't second of all I know that to feel better I can do things and third I just try them I do them because you I know from experience now that you have to do the work you have to do the work so if you do these things even at, you know at the beginning if you don't believe it if you don't you know you think this is not working it's not a magic wand you have to you know keep doing it I was um, watching a video the other day he was saying that um, things like you know, like uh, repeating positive affirmations or gratitude journaling that you have to give it at least like, two weeks or maybe a bit more to start seeing the changes and start noticing the benefits so I have been doing my gratitude journaling every day or almost every day for three months already and it has changed my life because you are focusing on the positive things and whoop, <laughs> This is nothing to do with toxic positivity. I mentioned before, emotions, they all have a purpose. You're gonna feel them. This is different. Instead of focusing on the uh, intrusive thoughts that you're getting, for instance, um, you know, your failure, or <laughs> instead of dwelling on those, you know, I do the, I kick. I kick the thought away. They come back, yeah, this super villain, that's so persistent. But this helps the brain if, you know, okay. I'm so passionate about this and I have so many ideas that just, they all, like, here's the thing. Nobody can have two thoughts at the same time. So if you have the intrusive thought saying, so, when are you going to feel better? When are you going to be normal? And you have another one saying, I am grateful for the nice meal that I had today. I am grateful for having a place where I feel warm. So, you are concentrating in that thought. Your mind cannot be engaged in the intrusive thoughts because you are actually thinking well what things can i be grateful for all this time that i'm writing my mind is focusing on those things and then it's awesome because <laughs> because then you know it you know like like i said like the other thoughts used to escalate and it was like this snowball growing but with my gratitude journaling it's the same with positive thoughts i'm writing here and then one thing leads to another you know, to another thoughts and then I'm, I'm i start thinking i'm so lucky because i'm paying more attention and because i'm more mindful i am by practicing mindfulness i am trying to be in the moment then i can pay attention to those things it doesn't mean that i'm not uh dealing with depression because you know i mean let's be honest i've been locked inside here for almost a year there's nowhere to go everything's closed now you know lockdown i barely talk to anyone i i you know i talk with my, my family and my friends online but i don't have you know that human contact the human connection like holding like hugging friends i don't have that and that is really really affecting me and my mental health so i also know that you know it's natural to to be um, 
struggling with my mental health. But instead of, you know, focusing on that, I'm trying to like, turn it around and keep punching my super villain called depression with all these tricks. Mindfulness is another thing that has been helping me so much. And it's not just meditation. You, you can do so many things throughout the day to be mindful, to practice mindfulness. So my favorite ones are in the shower. And this took a lot of practice. This is gonna sound strange, but I used to dread the shower. And that's another thing that is very difficult to do with uh, depression. Do the day-to-day uh, -day regular things like having a shower, take care of yourself. The shower for me was so difficult because that's a place where there's no distractions. I can be watching a movie and, and you know, like pretend that nothing is happening. So, you know, with depression sometimes it would be four days without showering. Now with mindfulness, after practicing and practicing and practicing, it didn't work at the beginning, but after doing it a lot, now I am able to practice mindfulness in the shower. It's just being in the moment. If your thoughts wander, you just bring uh, your mind back to the present and I have a shampoo that I love the smell so I'm enjoying the smell I'm looking at uh, my sponge and the bubbles that is you know making so I'm engaging smell and um, touch also also I forgot about my coffee this is another one mindfully eating or drinking i enjoy like every sip i try to mindfully enjoy that coffee to pay attention to the flavor how it feels in my mouth and and just you know drink it slowly so but all of those things help so much mindfulness it's proven that mindfulness helps with depression and again you are focusing on that I just wanted to mention a couple more things that I did over the past two weeks that have helped a lot with my depression. Depression is not just being sad. In fact, most of the times it's not exactly being sad. You know, sadness is a part, I think, of the, you know, of the whole thing. But for me, it manifests itself in hopelessness and this emptiness also lack of energy not being able to enjoy the things that you normally enjoy now for instance when I think about reading I try to read every day and when I think about reading it's one of my rewards we do it in the morning because when it's hard to get up I use that to motivate myself so if I know I get up I do my coffee I you know, do a couple of things I know that one of them that I'm gonna enjoy is reading but yeah sometimes you just can't when you have depression you just can't enjoy any of the things that you normally enjoy so in this case what I'm trying to do to deal with that when I see or when I notice that that part of the depression is starting to creep in is I try to motivate myself. So one thing that I did is I got this notebook. I love notebooks. I don't know if you can tell. This one, I haven't started yet, but just the fact that I got it it makes me happy and it's like a reward and at the same time motivation because this journal I mean this notebook I'm gonna use it as a journal um, yes I have the other one because I have so many things to write in the other journal I'm gonna use this one for my thoughts my emotion I think it's gonna be really really helpful I know that journaling uh, regular journaling is um, used as a uh, tool in therapy because first of all you you're not swallowing everything you're letting it out uh, in a way
way just that alone it's great it's, it's really helpful but then also because I'm gonna focus on my emotions and you know like uh, all the difficulties I'm having with um, you know the feelings of emptiness I'm gonna focus on those things I'm gonna write them down and that is also something that is hugely helpful you need to know what you're feeling you need to be aware of your emotions because that's the first step to dealing with them and to try to heal and feel better it's not that easy as it sounds because it's not just sad and happy you can be frustrated you can be and that's the other one that i wanted to talk about i think that's the main emotion that i've been fighting with the frustration because covid lockdown so for me you know before i said that i like having control and i like being able to do things to feel better but i'm not able to change any of those things so i need to be able to change or modify or control my reaction to those things so yes that's that's one way that i'm going to be doing this i hope you've enjoyed this video i would really love to know in the comments below if you have a minute to know which one is your super villain and what powers does he or she have and what powers do you have to to fight this super villain so as i said before if you think this video can help someone share it with them and don't forget to leave it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed and you're still watching and if you have a mental illness or a few like me if you are just you know fighting your super villain please know that you're not alone there's many 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 of us <laughs> and it does get better and yes it will come back and you will have to fight and fight and fight but I think it's worth it and we're all here we're supporting you you are worth it you are worth it and it does get better so let's do some work to feel better let's do something to fight our super villains let's do it together give it a try some of the things that I talked about in, in this video just give it a try give it some time and then let me know put it in the comments let me know how you're doing with that that's all for today i'll see you next week take care of yourself be kind to yourself don't be hard on yourself and try to practice some self-love you deserve it you're awesome thank you for watching see you next time Mwah.